Hello. Hello, good morning. It's not a good morning. It's a hello, hi. Oh, um, actually, my new favorite thing that I learned in the UK is hiya. That's my new favorite thing. Oh, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm moving to London. Because I'm living my life in London. Just kidding. How's everyone doing? Girl, the older I get, the under eyes. Oh, I hate the under eyes, the wrinkles. Anyways, how's everyone doing? Yeah, yeah, thank you, love. Um, I had to let my eyes rest from contacts because they have been like itchy magouchy lately. So I'm just doing my natural eyes. <laughs> what is everyone up to? Did you guys watch the episode yesterday? Did you watch the Smackdown of Smackdowns? Mama, I thought it was WWE, honey. <laughs> did you guys love it? Um, did you guys like like my commentary? Oh, my commentary. <laughs> did you guys live? Okay, so I watched the episode at like freaking 5 a.m. here. So I don't know what time it was over there, but it, 5 a.m. in London. And I was just like, this is so good. This is so good. Honestly, in my personal opinion, I think that they should do a lip sync smackdown every single season. Every season. Like, every season. I think it's amazing. I think after what Silky did on All Star 6, it needed to be done, and it needs to be done every single season. Um, also, that way you can see every single person in their element, which is lip syncing. I mean, because even if, say, like, lip syncing isn't your thing, you've at least done it, right? And you guys know, in order to be on RuPaul's Drag Race, you have to lip sync. Hello? Like, in order to stay, you have to lip sync. So, I think that it'd be a sickening thing every single season. Um, even if there's, like, this is the challenge. Like, even if there's, like, no immunity. Like, I had. Oh. Okay. Also, were you guys living for the fact that, like, <laughs> I was totally trolling the girls in the workroom? <laughs> I was totally, I was doing this in the workroom. Y'all, these girls can take it. I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm trying to, like, alleviate the stress. Maybe I cause more stress. I'm not sure. Um, but I loved it. I love when I was just like, oh, what if they bring everyone back? Oh, it was very that moment. I live, though. Um, but yes, um, I keep seeing a lot of comments and a lot of, um, like, I love you guys so much. Let me just say this. I love you guys so much because... Even though I was not... Oh my god, thank you for buying a badge, Jordan. Um, yeah, whoever buy badges, I love y'all. Um, so, even though I did not lip sync, I do love that you guys were still just like, Deja, you know, she was still in the episode. She was, you know, amazing, this and that, da 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 Like, I loved it. I was truly like, oh shit, okay. Because I was kind of nervous. I was like, is it just going to be the lip sync and then I'm just going to be like... Yay. Woo. You know what I mean? No, but, like, I was legit, like, edited in the episode and, like, lovely. Even in Untucked. Untucked was really fun, too. Um, but I have seen a lot of comments asking me, like, what my favorite lip sync was and all that stuff. So, rather than just say what, what my favorite lip sync was, let's just go down the line. Deja, you're an underrated queen. Agreed. I definitely agree with that statement because I think that... The fan base has already made up their mind about every single person and they're not they're not trying to change. And because I had a slow trajectory, I think that a lot of people continue to underestimate me and that's fine. You know, um, I like to say that my fans are quality and not quantity. And that's what we're going to continue to do. So let's go through the list. Might as well. Might as well. I got ready so freaking early. I don't even have to be. I literally am being picked up in an hour, so I have nothing to do. Hopefully my phone doesn't die by then, but yes. So, okay, let's go to it. So, um, first lip sync was Diane Jasmine for respect. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. That was so good. Um, I love that they both turned it. Honestly, that was one of the lip syncs where I was like, it could go either way. I think why Daya took it was the fact that you almost didn't expect it from her. 
If that, if that, like, makes sense. You almost didn't expect her to, like... She was giving sex. She was giving, like, sensuality. And she didn't do much. She really, like, embodied what the words were saying. And that, to me, is a great lip sync. As opposed... Um, stunts and all that stuff is great. But this is Aretha. This is not um, Britney Spears or Beyonce. This is, like, Aretha Franklin. Um, so... But it was an amazing lip sync. And what a way to start off the episode with like mm, Dia versus Jasmine because I know a lot of you a lot of you guys have wanted Dia or sorry Jasmine versus Georges but I'm sure you guys wanted Dia versus Jasmine just as much so amazing so next lip sync was oh my god okay next lip sync was a Luther Vandross song so let me just tell you guys when we got the list of songs Luther Vandross was on there. And I was like, Luther, why are we lip syncing to Luther Vandross? So it was the one song that I just really didn't listen to because I really didn't care for. Um, and then like, as the season progresses, you know, I'm not one to just not. So I'm like, okay, let me, let me just listen. And that song really grew on me. And then when Willow and Bosco lip sync to it, I was like, oh my God, this is so good. Like what I loved about Willow, Bosco did amazing. But what I loved about Willow was she, it's that embodiment. I said that Willow looks like if they made a music video for the song, Willow would be the girl in the song that he's talking about. If that makes sense. She had, she had on such a cool like costume. It was like a Courtney Love inspired um, uh, gown or dress. So cool, cut up and so, it was so fucking gorgeous. Um, I actually think she was the only one that didn't wear, like, a dance costume, quote-unquote. Um, but she, she just really embodied it and was, like, giving that little... Dun, dun, dun. She wasn't doing too much. That was the thing. She was not doing too much. Again, a lot of these songs don't require... They don't require that. You know, just take it down. Um, but Bosco was amazing and, and, that, and that lip sync as well. Um, we did not have bad lip, lip syncers. Um, on our season, guys. We don't. We People turn out in their own specific way. Okay, so then it was the triple lip sync, the threesome. Rue's such a whore. The threesome. Okay, so <laughs> the reason why we were so stuck on Georges doing J-Lo uh, was because she loves J-Lo, and she looks like J-Lo, and we're like, oh, J if she's being strategic, she's going to pick J-Lo. However, Georges can pretty much turn out any dance song. You know what I mean? Um, and I know... I know she chose radio because she wanted to give an equal opportunity to everyone. Georges is not a shady cunt. Georges is very much like, you know what? Yes, I'm going to eat you alive. But I want to give you an equal... Like, an equal opportunity. You know what I mean? So she's not going to do J-Lo. She's going to like, okay, radio has different tempos. Radio has different kind of accents. So I think that she knew that everyone can kind of give it. Like, and Jerry can give her kind of Southern, you know what I mean? Camden can still give her flowy hot, and Georges is going to be Georges. You know what I mean? Um, so that was definitely a lip sync. I told Georges, um, so when we, um... When we go out for the runway and we're standing all there in a line, you know, Georges is always on. When she's in drag, she's a woman. She doesn't even transform into a queen. She transforms into, like, a woman. Like, her demeanor is just, like, like ready to do so at all times. So I was telling Georges after the fact, after we watched her lip sync, she came back to the work room and I was like, like, I can't wait for you to see yourself, like, on TV. Because the way she carries herself is just so beautiful, so mesmerizing. Hi, Trevor. Love you. Um, adore. Hi, adore. Hi, gorgeous. Um, the way she carries herself is just so, like, stunning and so just, like, uh, like, all of us wish. All of us wish. Okay, let's just say that. Um, but of course, George just wins the lip sync. However, this was one of the instances that I was like, oh, this could go anyway. I feel like every single lip sync, it could have gone either way. No one, like, demolished another. There were obviously little accents that people picked up here and there. But I don't think anyone, like, demolished anyone. Um, 
But this was the lip sync where it was like, Angeria death drop, George's death drop, Camden, <gasps> she's death drop. <laughs> but again, I don't think Camden was really worrying about um, anyone else, you know what I mean? Adore, I love you so much. You have no idea. And I haven't seen you in so long, so we definitely... Adore, are you going to DragCon? Let me know. Let me know. Oh, also, Adore, I don't know if you're doing anything this week, but I'm going to be in LA for, um, like, three days. I'm going to do some fittings and then um, a photo shoot. So if you're not doing anything, let's get lunch or something. <laughs> oh, thank you, Adore. I love you. Thank you. Um, it's definitely been, like, a... I've, I've been doing this, so let's continue to do that, you know? Um, and then next week is Rusical. Oh, Moulin Rouge, the musical, by the way. Like, Moulin Rouge. Yes, I'll be at Dark Homeless Kick It. Adore, you're down. It's a date. Um, okay, so, um, Georgia Swins that lip sync. Great. So now it's four and four. So now it's an even number, you know? Um, so when, uh, who was the next one? Oh, Camden was after she just... Lit, um, lunch boots. Yes, yes, yes. Adore. Let's get lunch. Let's get to lunch. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, by the way, this is something. Yes. Okay. Let me address this because I have to shout out my good sis with the big milk. Mama, big silk with the good milk on pit stop was everything I needed. Everything I needed. So the fact of the matter is, like we said, like, I think that I am very underrated. I think that I am very overlooked by the fan base. Um, and even some alum, which is fine. Everyone has a taste. Everyone has an opinion. Um, but I love that, um, Silky really did kind of validate me. And the thing is, is I did Silky's, um, 10 year anniversary, uh, party. So she saw me lip sync. She saw me lip sync twice in my element. So, um, she, when Monet was like, who do you think is the best lip syncer? And she said me. Deja Sky. And, you, and if you ask RuPaul, who is the best lip thinker? He did call me the assassin. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I think we're all amazing lip thinkers. I, if if there was one person that I would not want to lip sync against, to be honest, I'm fine. You know what? Never mind. I'm fine lip syncing against anyone because I feel like people are going to, like, people are going to give something extra every single time. It's not about. Doing the tricks and doing the this and doing the that and doing the that. You know, everyone's going to have their own niche and everyone's going to have their way of, of, of lip syncing. But I will tell you this. Georges, my good sis, Georges did tell me that I'm the only person that she would not want to lip sync against. Just saying. I'm just saying. The only one. And my sis don't lie. And she said it. She was like, you were the only one I don't want to go up against, girl. So, go I'm glad you're safe. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I just felt very invalidated by um, the pit stop. Um, and I Monet really likes me too. Monet loves my personality and everything. So I'm here for that. Um, but I just felt very validated with Silky. I felt very just like, she saw me, she knew me, she gave me my flowers. And so, Silky, shout out to you. I love you, sister. Okay, so... Next, oh my god, this next lip sync. Oh my god. So the next bleh, the next lip sync was Lady Camden and she picked Bosco and they did in Vogue. Okay. This was the only power ballad. The Luther Vandross was like a groove ballad, right? This was a power ballad. This was the second one of the season because uh, me and Daya did fall in and that was like full on ballad. And and they did like Unbreak My Heart, but it was like a <laughs> oops, 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 Unbreak My Heart, you know. So this was a power ballad. So this requires a lot of emotion. This requires a lot of um, feeling. And I, in my opinion, in a competition, I feel like ballads are the best like the best thing to do in a competition. And, and I will tell you why. In a competition, you have so much emotion. You have so much writing on this. You have so much pressure. Doing a ballad, you literally can fucking cry. You can let it all out. And people are scared to do a ballad. And you know, ballad is a very, ballad is a, hi Mondo, ballad is a very, um, 
it, it, it's a tricky thing. But if you, let me tell you this, if you can stand in one spot and give passion and mug and emotion, you're golden. You're feeling so much at this point. And especially at this point where it was like this, the, the, the top eight, it was hard to get rid of us. It was hard to get rid of us. So there's so much emotion. There's so much, you know, there's so much on the line. And especially um, last week with um, the, you know, the game. Um, I was just like, this is the song that everyone should be in tune with. This is the song that it doesn't require anything. I think that Camden did amazing. Camden's always graceful. And she's still emoted. And Bosco, again, sexy and emoted. But honestly, it's one of those ballads where if you stood in one spot and kind of bobbed and weaved, it's still going to... And just give face. Just give face. The, the, the newer generation of drag that I've noticed, which is completely fine, the newer generation of drag is all about the stunts. They want to do a split. They want to do a death drop 50 times, a cartwheel. That's all fine and dandy. But mama, it takes a captivating entertainer to stand there and captivate an audience without doing anything. That's why I think that ballads are the hardest thing to do. Because every young queen can dance now, you know, well, dance. But it takes a different type of entertainer to just captivate you with just mug, emotion, and, you know, a flick of the wrist. So, oh, that was the song where I was like, this is going to be good. And they did not disappoint. They did not disappoint at all. And that camera angle that you guys saw where it was like Camden here and Bosco here. And they would like zoom in and zoom. Oh, oh, so good. It was so good. And we actually saw that. That was the camera angle that we saw. We didn't see the full production, but that was the camera angle that we saw. And we were just like, amazing. So I have to tell you this. So when Camden won and she came backstage with us, of course, I was the first one to embrace her. And I have known Camden for years, but I have not seen Camden cry. I have seen Camden be very put together. It's probably the ballerina in her. I get it. Very put together, very poised. You know, um, everything is spoken for. And at that moment, I just knew that it just all came crashing down. And I knew that when that happens, that's a breakthrough. Because I went on the show knowing and believing, firm believer, and never be afraid of your emotions. Never be afraid of it. And I've said it and I've talked. Plenty of girls started to cry and I'm like, baby, don't even be afraid of emotions. Let it happen. You are human. And so at that moment, I really felt an even deeper connection with Camden. And throughout the season, me and Camden got ready together every single time talking about our lives. So I know it seems like we were kind of in our own worlds, you know. Um, but it was very much like Bosco always got ready by herself, just to think, and she would talk to everyone, you know, and then me and Camden would always get ready. Jasmine would kind of get ready near us. And then it was always, um, Daya and, um, Georges, um, on the table and then Nigerian Willow. So that was kind of our setup. Um, but we always communicated, but me and Camden were always talking left and right. So don't get a twist y'all. Okay. So sorry. That was a lot, but I love that lip sync. I think that was my, like... I think that was my favorite lip sync of the night, for sure. Um, so then we went to Jasmine and Angeria. And baby Jasmine, she was so emotional. So Jasmine really did connect. I think she said it in her, um, what she packaged. She really did connect with uh, me, Angeria, and Georges. Those, I mean, she, she connected with everyone, but I think those were the ones that really kind of... Um, um, I never judged Jasmine, you know. Um, Jasmine... Like I said, she can get annoying, but I'm not going to judge her for what it is. And that only lasted that first day. After the next day, I was like, this is Jasmine, mama. This is her. Who cares? You know? Um, so they did Love Don't Cost a Thing, which I live for. That's actually my favorite play. You know what's funny? My two favorite J-Lo songs were on this season of Repose Drag Race. So play and Love Don't Cost a Thing, my two favorite J-Lo songs. Like... Day low songs. Um, this was one of those things. Okay, so if you notice, whenever we're sitting down in the back, oh, I'm giving all the tea. Whenever we're sitting down in the back, and Andrea kind of goes down like, 
Do, 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 do. We were living because, well, this, the episode two girls were living because, um, during her talent show, she was like, on my neck, check. So she, it was kind of like a callback to that. That's why we were living because Angeria demolished that talent show, bitch. Demolished that talent show, mama. She came out like a motherfucking, like, bull, like, I'm here, what's up? And then it was, I always remember that, on my neck, check. And so the fact that she did that, I was just like, oh my God, Nigeria. Like she was killing it. I do think, ironically, I do think that she really lived in her, she lived in her moment with the, the JLo song. You know, I think she was less tense. Going up against Georges, I'd be tense too, right? And Camden, I'd be tense. But I think that Love Don't Cost a Thing, I think she was really kind of like centered, right? And really in her own and she was loving the skin she was in and so she was just like you could tell also because during the um during the uh beyonce one she didn't smile once during the j-lo she was smiling ear to ear like she was having fun right she was like in the groove da -da 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 -da. it was just good it was just good um jasmine did amazing too it's just two different energies you know what i mean like um and, you know, Angeria is really kind of feeling it, grooving. Jasmine is like the pop with the hot, you know what I mean? So it's hard to gauge. Um, but I definitely saw like a light with Angeria that I didn't see in the first lip sync. So of course, Angeria wins. So then it's down to the bottom two. And I have to be honest. I like, I, I, you know what? I can't say I didn't expect because anything is expected, right? Um, but it's just, it's, it. I was kind of shocked that it was Bosco and um, Jasmine in the bottom two, like 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 the last lip sync. That's crazy. Um, but so this was a song, another song that grew on me. Hi, Jiggly. That grew on me after the fact, um, just like the the Luther. Because I remember when when I was listening to the song, it just didn't it it didn't grab me, you guys. It didn't grab me at the beginning. Um, and then it was another song that you kind of just have to listen to and you'll like start loving it. So when they both went down, I was lying there, lying on the beach. I was sold. I was done. I was at that moment. I was completely enthralled with both of them. I was turned on by Bosco and I was like, this is Jasmine's moment. Like it was like, it was, uh, Ugh, like this was, I love that this was the last lip sync because I felt like it was true, like the embodiment of both of them. Both of them were just for their lives. They're like, I'm not going. And neither of them, and neither of them did too much. Neither of them did too much. Like they were just on it. They were serving mug, body, sex. They were, it was everything. And then unfortunately, obviously, um, Jasmine, Spoiler alert, my sister had to sashay away. Um, Jasmine is actually one of my... Uh, I love everyone in the season. I have a connection with every single person, staff, Rue, Michelle. I have a connection with every single person that was on that set. But I think that I had a very deep and personal connection with Jasmine because I was the voice of reason for her. And I was like the mom. I was a mom to a lot of people. But I was the mom um, to her and Georgia specifically because I was the oldest and they were the youngest. So I had a natural reaction to, you know, wanting to mentor them and help them. But not even that. I wasn't just barking orders at them or anything like that. It was very much like a, a copacetic kind of uh, relationship. And I love them. I love them so much. Um, but I, uh, it's just, I didn't want to see, I didn't want to see anyone go. Um, but... It was just, I think that Jasmine was amazing, is amazing. She's going to have an amazing career. She is a woman. Don't ever get it twisted. If you ever, 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 ever use the wrong pronouns for my sister, I'm coming for you, just an FYI. Um, but she's a beautiful, gorgeous woman. She is a light. Um, honestly, too, she's learned. She's learned a lot from the show. You know, I think that being on the show, you're in a pressure cooker. So you don't really understand sometimes how you're coming across. Mama Jiggly's always so in shade. <laughs> um, 
And so I think that watching herself on TV really did help her um, in the best way possible. And I just love her. I love my Jasmine. I love my baby cakes. Um, but, I mean, she turned it out. Here's the thing. At least every single lip sync, she turned it the fuck out. It would be different if she fizzled out. It would be different if she gave up. It would be... No, she gave it her all every single time. That's a true winner. That's a true sister. That's a true, like... You know what I mean? Like, she hands down was like, you know what? Maybe it could be my time. But I'm going to turn it out. I'm going to show the world why I'm here. And Mama, she's an amazing lip singer. And if you haven't booked her, book her. <laughs> um, but yeah. Oh my God. Okay, so people want to see the Georges. Okay, so this happened during the My Head and My Heart lip sync with Orion. Shout out to you, sister. Hi. Um, and it was... It, it just stuck in my head the entire time. And we would always do it on set randomly. So we were just like, um, I was calling it the Georges and she was like, oh, the punch the ghost. So we're just punch the ghost. So we're just down, 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 down. It's just so good. It's so good. And it works in so many scenarios. So many scenarios. It's just, I don't know. So good. So good. Um... Oh, oh, so I've seen a lot of comments saying like, like, I wish I would have lip sync. I wish I would have lip sync too. I really do. Like, the thing is, is I'm a lip syncer, you know, um, I'm also, um, ready to do so at all times. <laughs> um, I mean, I was, you guys, I am fucking excited and happy that I had immunity, but if it was, but if Rue was like, Deja, you... Won the challenge. However, you still have to participate. Mama, I'm ready. I'm golden. Any of those songs I would have demolished. If if I had to pick one song that I was like, I want to do this. Um, oh, my God. Okay, I want to say In Vogue, but considering I already did Fallen, which was a ballad, and I wanted to show something different, I would have loved to do Love Don't Cost a Thing. I do. I would love... To do. Love you too, Jiggles. I would have loved to do Love Don't Cost a Thing. I think it's one of those, one of those tempos where you can be sexy, you can dance, like, you can do a lot of things with Love Don't Cost a Thing. You know, it's not a, it's not like a specific, you have to do that. I, I mean, that's lip sync in general. You don't have to do nothing on a lip sync. Or, like, you don't, there's no rule on a lip sync where you have to do this. I just think as long as you embody the song or bring something to the song, that's all that really matters. But I would have loved to do Love Don't Cost a Thing. And the, um, that's the thing is, Mama, I, I was prepared for anything. I still practice. I was still like, you know what? Nothing is for certain. So I'm going to rehearse these songs. Like, in the hotel room, I'm going to make sure that I, you know. And <laughs> to be honest, oh, I really wish I would have lip synced. Because I'm telling you, I would have done the Georges. I would have done the Georges. It, it, Mama, even if, 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 if I was going against Georges, I would have done. You ready? You ready? Yeah. But it was such a good episode. And it was such... I mean, I know it was stressful, but people loved it. Like, sorry, people don't love the stress. People loved the episode. Like, the episode was fun. You know? It was one of those episodes where we literally just had a little kiki at, at the beginning, did our makeup, and then the whole episode was just performing. I had a fucking blast. I had a blast. Um... But yes, yeah, so next, oh, sorry, didn't shave, but I'm wearing long sleeves. Um, so if you're wondering why I'm in makeup, I am at uh, Heaven Night Club tonight for G-A-Y. You guys, I'm doing a one woman show. I've never done a one woman show in my life. I've always done, um, like, I'm in a cast, right? I'm going to add to the cast. I've never, I've never done a one woman show. So it's just me. I'm doing three numbers. Um, so I'm going to change in between. Um, so first show is at 1 a.m. If you're in London, I know it's in, in the States, it's like around, it's like late noon right now or late afternoon. Uh, oh, excuse me. So if you're in London at J.A. White at, at Heaven, I already heard the line was crazy long. Um, but first show is 1 a.m. And then, it, and then it'll be like, so it'll be like 1 a.m. And then like 1.30 and then 2. So it'll be cute. Um, 
I'm excited because I'm doing my favorite British artists because I'm like, oh, Miss You Too, daughter. My favorite British artists. Um, so I get to do, like, like, mama. I cannot come to London and not do the Spice Girls. I cannot come to London and not do Little Mix. I cannot come to London and not do Queen. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, this is the perfect opportunity. And these are songs that I do normally in the States anyways. But I was like, I have to come to London and do these artists. And so I'm like, I'm so ready. I'm so excited. I was ready to do so. But since I didn't get to lip sync on last week's episode or yesterday's episode, yesterday's episode, I get to lip sync to Lord. But yes, if you're in the London area, come out to Heaven Nightclub um, for G-A-Y or D-E-J-A. <laughs> oh my God, also, if you're ever in London, please go check out Death Drop. Death Drop is a play um, at the Criterion, Criterion. Yes, if you're ever, uh, it's called the Criterion Theater. It's called Death Drop. Um, right now it's with, um, it's featuring uh, Kitty Scott Claus and um, Juju B. Um, but however, uh, Vinegar Strokes in there as the lead. Um, oh my God, I don't know the other people's names, but they're amazing. They're amazing actors and actresses. All, like so funny. I was screaming laughing the entire time. And Juju even told me afterwards, she was just like, we knew you were there, bitch. We heard you. <laughs> it was funny. I can't contain my my laughter if it's fucking funny. Um, but yes, <clears throat> please go if you um, are ever in the London area. And I want to come back. So I explored London yesterday with, with Shaz, Cheryl, Cheryl. I explored London yesterday with her. Or like... Walking distance London with her. It was amazing. Um, but I would love to come back. I would I, I'm kind of sad. I wish I would have um I wish I would have uh like um stayed like an extra couple of days so I can like fully explore. But I have plans. So I couldn't do it. But I'm definitely gonna come back. I better. Jeremy, if you're watching. Bring me back. Bring me back. Oh, also, I don't know if you guys knew this. I think I posted it on my story, so y'all should have seen it. I fully met Charlie XCX on Thursday. She came to my show. <laughs> it wasn't my show. Um, so I did a porn idol for the first time. Oh my God, mama, the men in London are hairy and gorgeous, okay? Hairy. Like, y'all know I love Harry. Mm. You know I love Harry, man, mama. Also, this is so weird. So obviously in London or the UK, um, you have to get Wild Presents Plus in order to watch our season. So I thought that like, you know, like I was, no one was going to know, you know, who I was. I have literally been recognized left and right here. Like out of drag. Like, I'm like, what? Like... It's, it's like amazing. Like, I'm so just like, but I, I remember walking and like, I was walking with Shez and her boyfriend and like, I, I was hearing like faintly like, Deja, Deja. And I'm like, there's no way that, you know, you know there's no way that someone knows it's me. Cause yes, hi, gorgeous. Um, and then this really tall, sexy Brazilian man was just like, Deja, I love you, blah, blah, blah. So it's just like, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's like, work you know um but it's like it's 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 pretty cool even at um death drop i was like waiting in the lobby and people were like can we take a picture and i loved it i was just so like the uk and then even um uh when i was talking to cheryl cheryl was like mama they love you here like they really do so that makes me feel so excited um yes brazil oh i need to go to brazil too so london has hairy uncut men and brazilian uh, and brazil has like Tall, melanated, uncut men. Love it. Um, but anyways, enough about hairy men. No, actually not. I can never get enough about. Will you be at DragCon? Yes, I will be at DragCon this year in LA, and I will be at DragCon next year for DragCon. I was going to say BBC. 
I will be at DragCon UK next year as well. Um, also, something here is like literally all the um, every single like mandate is gone here. People are just clubs are packed. Like I'm like oh okay. So I've been drinking water out of glass bottles here, and I'm pretty sure they're not free. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be charged for them. Like, I don't think I'm going to get my deposit back. It's okay. Um, but yeah, so excited. London has been amazing to me. I can't wait to come back. Um, <clears throat> if, you haven't, if you haven't already, watch the new episode. It's amazing. Um, and yes, continue, continue, continue. Um, to support me and to support my sisters. We love the support. We need the support. And when the season is all over, I can't wait for the season to be over in a sense that people will just love us for our craft and not because episode four, Deja was in the bottom. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Like, I can't wait for the season to be over. That way the stress and the anxiety is gone and we could just... People could just love us for us, you know. But um, I'm going to let you guys go. I have to charge my phone a little bit. Um, come to P-Town. Providence. Oh, I will be in Providence. I need to message Raphael to get my um, reschedule. But I will be in P-Town very soon. Little John gave me a shout out. Yes, he did. Oh, yeah. Little John gave me a shout out. Little John saw it and, and was amazing. Actually, Rue told me the... His favorite thing about my Snatch game is that he knew that Little John would love it. Like, he he knew I wasn't going to, like, offend him. And he knew that he could, like, you know, take a joke. Australia. Um, I will more than likely be on tour in Australia in January... Uh, sorry, November, December with a couple of gals. Stay tuned. Um, and then, yeah. Um, I just got... Um, some dates that are coming up, I'm in Lake Tahoe Friday, um, and then the following week on a Thursday, I am in Pomona for 340, which is sickening. Um, oh my, I mean, I might as well say, it's not like it's a secret. And then April, um, April 1st, which is a Friday after that, I'm actually going to LA Fashion Week, bitch. LA Fashion Week. Me. Me. Um, a friend of mine reached out and said that he would love for me to come. And so I'm like, Mama, might as well. I'm not a fashion girl, but I can deliver, you know, style. I'll I'll give him something. So April 1st, I will be at LA Fashion Week. Oh, me, me, the plus size diva. Oh, <laughs> just kidding. Um, so all, oh, and then also some more, um, I will be at, Okay, I will be at um, uh, Southern Nights in um, Orlando. Southern Nights in Florida for two nights, I believe. Um, yes, LA Fashion Week, the pastel edition. I actually have my outfit already. It's like a magenta moment with like a ponytail. It's really cute. I'm going to give him drag. I'm not going to go there and try to be like a woman. Mama, I'm going to give him drag. Um, I will be in Southern Nights. Um... April, oh my god. I'm not going to give exact dates because I don't know. I'm just trying to remember my calendar. Um, I will be in uh, Houston, Texas, April 10th. For sure, I know that. I'm at Rebar. Um, I'm so excited. Houston, I've heard nothing but Houston, like great about Houston drag, so I'm excited. April 10th, which is a brunch. So if you haven't gotten your tickets, I'm sure it's on their website, so go there. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I believe, okay, so Southern Nights, I believe it's, the weekend after April 10th, I'll be at Southern Nights, Friday, Saturday. Then I will be at Seattle for a brunch that Sunday. So Southern Nights is like April 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So Southern Nights is 15, 16. And then I will be at Seattle for drag brunch on the 17th. I will also be in, um, you saw me at heaven. Oh, come, come back tonight. <laughs> Um, uh, 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 u
Oh, I will be back in Seattle for Seattle Pride. I will be at Queer Bar with my sister Bosco um, the f- last weekend of June for their Pride. I, I, I'm not on the Pride stage. I believe after my gig, I have to go to NYC Pride because I'll be at N- um, NYC Pride as well. Um, and then I believe um, I will be at... Um, oh, you'll be there April 17th? Fierce. Love it. Um, I believe I will be... Um, at Fresno Pride, I'm hoping, um, whatever, I was just in Indianapolis for Silky's birthday, or, um, drag anniversary, mama, come on, um, yes, okay, sorry, um, I'm trying to think of anything else that, um, oh, and then it will be near me, I will be at Bakersfield, um, which is, like, near me, um, May, I think, 8th. For um all um um Red Sea br- Red Sea <laughs> all of Red's brunch. Oh, I will be at Austin Drag Fest, um, my birthday weekend, which is um April twenty second. So I'll be there April twenty second or twenty third, one of those. I think I'll be there all weekend, unless I have another gig. I don't know. Um, and then also um, I'm trying to get this off the ground. So if you're in my area. I will be at, or I will, I'm hoping to be at Illusion Strack Shows April 20th to celebrate my birthday. So that's on Wednesday. And then April 21st at Splash Bar, which is, uh, I said Thursday. I'm so sorry. Illusion is a Wednesday, April 20th, 420. I don't smoke, so don't bring me weed. Um, and then April 21st will be at Splash Bar. And that's to celebrate my birthday with the people that I love. So hopefully I'll be there and I'll see you guys. Um, because the next day I have to go to, um, Austin, so. Anyways, um, I'm gonna let you guys go. Deja the lipstick is ass inside. You know it, mama. Um, what do you want for your birthday? Um, what do I want for my birthday? I don't know, surprise me. I'm not picky, just. What lashes? This is mascara. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what, what I want for my birthday, but I'm sure you guys will be lovely for me for my birthday. My birthday is April 22nd, just an FYI. April 22nd, 22 is my birthday. Um, I will be 32 years old, which is crazy. So give me a back brace. Just kidding. I love you guys, but I'm going to head out. Um, I have to get ready for this gig. Come to Brazil, you know, mama, come to Brazil. Book me in Brazil. But I love you guys so much. Um, and I will see you guys soon for another live. Love you guys. Bye.